I feel like, well, I should have just gone back and dug out last year's video for this week because we fell on some very similar tracks as last year in a lot of different ways. But there continue to be some headwinds in our economy as well as in the marketplace, and we need to stay focused on them. Just as a warning sign, let's get into it all. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo market data in the state of Massachusetts. And we're also going to do a quick interest rate update and then talk about some very relevant current events. We are seeing the increase in buyer demand in the numbers. I'm going to actually talk about that more in a couple moments. But in the last couple of weeks, I have been talking about about all of the increases in buyer demand that we've been seeing. But there really wasn't that much data or proof that I could really show you as to what I was saying, right? Just proof to the pudding. Well, that just changed. Now, I don't think you really want to see my call logs or I'm confident my clients wouldn't want me showing you all of their pre-approvals from all of the new buyer demand that we're seeing for the spring market. But there is little doubt that the spring market, it's upon us and you're going to see that today. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions about anything in regards to real estate, then know I'm here to help. Two quickies, real quick. We buy houses all over the state of Massachusetts and for cash, fast or slow clo closing timelines. It doesn't matter. If you know of anyone that's thinking about selling and doesn't want to go through the hassles of the traditional sale in that traditional way, then have them come visit us at cashoffermna.com or just give me a call. Speaking of the good old traditional way, we now offer a selling program of 1% instead of the traditional 5 to 6% that you see pretty much everywhere else. If you know of anyone thinking about selling their house and wanting to see ends of thousands of dollars, then I'd love to chat with them. Let's jump into the single family market stats. Inventory grew, but not like last week. Inventory was up slightly this week to 2,967 single family houses on the market in the state of Massachusetts. We now have five and a half percent more homes on the market today than we did just 28 days ago. And we're closing in on the yearly inventory high of 3,000 units, which was set back on January 22nd of 2024. Year over year, the inventory level spread just it pulled back a little bit, but we are still above the levels of last year. We now have 53 more single family homes on the market today than when compared to the same time last year. For comparison purposes, this number, it was 82 last week, but we now have 1,010 more houses on the market today than back in 2022. This is compared to last week's number of 807 units. The takeaway, it's that the increase in inventory levels should be much appreciated by the buyers that are out there and well are currently entering the marketplace. Another high 800 unit newly listed week this week, we listed 883 single family homes in the state of Massachusetts. This is 70 units or 8.6% more than the same week back in 2023. This now makes for six consecutive week streak of listing more houses than when compared to the same time back in 2023. Now that four week rolling average is 691 units. This surge in listing inventory is proof that the spring market, it's a ride. It really is crazy. We continue to barely be able to see this year's blue line as it just continues to follow last year's production levels. Last week, I said that under agreements, they should surge this week. And how about that? They sure did. We had 835 houses go under agreement. Now, this was 12 units or 1.5% more than the same week last year when 823 single family houses went under agreement. The four week rolling average is 682 units, which is exactly what it was last week. I've never seen that happen, so kind of cool. This is a little bit more proof in the numbers that the spring market has come upon us. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were up by over 8.6%, while under agreements, they were up by 1.5%. I'm just going to point out a little something here that this is now two weeks of year over year under agreement increases. Could April be the month that we break that nearly four year monthly trend of year over year sales declines? I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing for that to actually happen. 
There were 388 single-family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $764,000 and a median sales price of $580,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were down by 4.9% as there were 408 single-family houses that sold last year for an average sales price of $677,000. Months of inventory. This is how we gauge what type of market are we in. Are we in a strong seller's market or a buyer's market? Now, zero to five months, that's considered a very strong seller's market. Well, I should say the closer you get to zero, the stronger the seller's market it is, with zero to five months being that seller's market. This week, months of inventory was down slightly to 1.46 months from last week's 1.47 months. But this 1.46 months this week is compared to the 1.33 months this week last year. Say that two times fast. Jeez. Real quick. My shameless plug, I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help. Now on to the condo market. We have 2011 condos on the market as of Monday. This is 9.4% more than the inventory levels of just 28 days ago. So buyers, be happy what you see here. This 2,000 plus units is an inventory high for 2024. More great news for home buyers. But even with that high and the inventory gain, we actually lost a little ground in the year over year inventory gap. We now have 129 more units on the market today than we did today last year. And this is compared to the 148 units last week. Meanwhile, we have 496 more units when compared to the inventory levels of 2022. And this 496 units was compared to last week's 407. So just like in the single family market, the condo market lost ground when compared to inventory levels in 2023, but gained ground when compared to inventory levels of 2022. There were 490 condos that came on the market last week with that four week rolling average of 395 units. Now, the 490 now that units four -week listed rolling was 11 units, or 2.3 percent more than the 479 condos that came on the market this week last year. Under agreement, shot up this week, though, but they were pretty much toe-to-toe -to -toe with last year. This week, we put 419 condos under agreement. Now, the 419 condo sales was four units, or 0.9 percent more than last year when we put 415 condos under agreement. Now, that four-week rolling average for under agreements was 343 condos per week. So 2.3% more listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year, while selling 0.9% more condos. There were 202 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $672,000 and a median sales price of $546,000. This same week last year, there were 211 condos that sold so sales levels were actually down by 4%. Months of inventory, it pulled back slightly to 2.37 months from last week's 2.41 months. This is compared to the months of inventory levels of 2.01 months this week last year. Any chance you can just do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button? It's right down there. Just believe it or not, it just helps play with that YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't considered subscribing and you're liking the content, then I truly appreciate you subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates. It was a great week for interest rates, but I think that's all about to be wiped out with the economic data that was just released. I have been talking about how I felt that inflation numbers were going to come in hot. And last week, I actually talked about how I'm thinking that a rate hike is more probable than a rate cut in the near future. And while people haven't necessarily jumped on the rate hike bandwagon yet, they have jumped into the conclusion that a rate cut, it's not happening anytime soon. I'm starting to see more and more mention that a rate cut will now not happen this summer. Like I said last week, just take any mention of a rate cut talk off the table. Folks have been talking about a rate cut for nearly a year now. This economic data will not allow the Fed to cut rates. Inflation, it came in hot and consumer prices hit new record highs. The CPI year over year came in at 3.2%, which was 0.1% higher than expected. Core inflation came in at 3.6%. Okay, not a huge deal, but it's also all about the revisions. They went back and actually revised previous months higher as well. The 0.4% month over month increase is the highest level we've actually seen since August of last year. So what did we see in these numbers? Shelter had increased another 0.4% in February. Rent index rose a half percent. Airline fares were up 3.6%. Car insurance, another 0.9%. 
But back to housing, because that's what you came here for. Shelter is up 5.7% year over year, while rent is up 5.77% year over year. This is why folks who actually own a house and have a locked in mortgage payment are able to weather the inflation storm better than those that aren't and are well renting. And the last thing, I'm not trying to get political here, and I have done a past video on this, but we now have politicians talking about offering a credit for first time home buyers in order to combat the high home prices. I wish I could get on a hill with one of those uh, loud speakers to just yell at the top of my lungs to these idiot politicians. You can't fix affordability, or in other words, you can't fix high prices in a marketplace by offering incentives for people to buy and thereby increase the demand in that marketplace. Increased demand with constant supply will always equate to higher prices. If these idiots were to pass something like this, then that will only lead to even higher prices. In other words, here's reason number um, 127 as to why you should buy a house and lock in your pricing and thereby your payment today. Things to keep an eye out on and some possible headwinds for closure rates increasing. I'm starting to see it. The consumer being tapped out. We've seen the record high credit card debt and we've talked about it, but now there are stories and stats out there about a record number of people rating their 401ks in order to make ends meet. But in the end, just know that inflation, it's not going anywhere until they get government spending under control. It's a drug to these idiots. And it's because they really don't care about us regular folks and what overspending does to you and I. Reach out to your representative because they're going through the budgeting process right now with the starting point being a $7.2 trillion budget that would require us to print trillions of dollars a year. Printing trillions more a year equals more inflation. More inflation equals the higher prices, including house prices. Buy a house and lock in your housing payment now because it's only going to get worse and worse. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs again? It's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're thinking about buying or selling a house in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you have any questions in regards to this data or anything that's going on in the real estate market, then I'm here to help. Just reach out. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along all of my contact information. You can visit YouTubeRealEstateAgent.com or find all of my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.